Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So I'm just going to warn you up front, this is going to be one of the most maddening and frustrating things that you probably hear all day. A federal district court judge has found that banning so-called assault weapons is perfectly fine and constitutional because they're not protected by the Constitution. And why are they not protected by the Constitution? That's the thing that is the most frustrating. So let's talk about what's going on here. Okay, so let's go and talk about what's going on here. So it looks like we have another federal district court judge who is more of an activist than an actual judge who upholds the rule of law. This judge, Rebecca Palmeyer, has decided that she's going to ignore the Constitution and ignore the rule of law, ignore the Supreme Court, and simply put her agenda on the table. And in doing so, she has upheld a so-called assault weapons ban in the state of Illinois by claiming that because the fire rate is one-third you know, in semi-automatic mode versus automatic mode. One third of what an M16 could do in the military, rate of fire wise, uh, then that makes it so similar that it is therefore not protected by the constitution. Now we're gonna take a look at the judge's own words here in just a second, and trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one because it is mind blowing the way that these people think. But basically by saying that they're too similar to what they use in the military and therefore not protected by the constitution, she avoids Bruin altogether because she doesn't have to go anywhere past the second amendment text test. She doesn't have to go into history and tradition or anything like that because she claims again, that they are too close to what they use in the military and therefore uh, they're not even protected by the constitution and so the second amendment is not even involved in this case whatsoever. Now she's citing Beavis v Naperville which is a case that went up to the seventh circuit court of appeals where the seventh circuit basically said the same thing. They're too close to what they use in the military and therefore they're not protected by the constitution. She used a bunch of uh, uh, analysis from that case to come up with her own decision basically saying that there is a puzzle here and while it's a very complex puzzle there is a very simple solution to this puzzle basically uh, saying the quiet part out loud there's a simple solution here all we have to say is that they're too similar to what they use and that's it they're not protected by the Constitution we don't have to go any further so that's what she did. She basically took from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. She made a very simple solution to her job and simply wiped it off the table. So let me read to you exactly what she said. Now, while this is something that she discussed throughout pretty much her entire order and opinion, I'm going to scroll down to page 13 here where it's, it's very clear where her frame of mind was, where it says, this is truly a distinction without difference. Beavis made clear that the relevant distinction is not how fast the AR-15 shot in isolation, but how its firing rate compares with that of an M16, which, as recognized in Heller, was appropriately subject to regulation. We do not rule out the possibility that the plaintiffs will find other evidence that shows a sharper distinction between AR-15s and M16s than the present record reveals. Uh, by the court's math, uh, pre-modification with bump stocks or other devices, AR-15 shoot about 40% as many rounds in a minute as the M16, 300 versus 700. The difference is similar though. Using the plaintiff's numbers, if the M16 uh, can effectively shoot 15 or excuse me 150 to 200 rounds a minute and the AR-15 uh, pre-modification could shoot around 45 to 65 rounds a minute then the AR-15 could shoot about 33 percent as many rounds a minute as the M16 does so again this is all revolving around how fast somebody can move their finger I mean that's really what it boils down to if you can move your finger really really fast then it's too close to what they use in the military there is no indication in beavis that this percentage difference in minute to minute firing capacity would render the ar-15s different enough from the m16 which the court assumed were military weapons to render them subject to second amendment protection so that's where she's saying there's not enough of a difference numbers wise there's not enough of a difference number wise where it would render these subject to second amendment protection. And by doing that, she can simply avoid everything in Bruin and everything else. Moreover, the court in Beavis made a point of stressing that AR-15s can easily be modified with bump stocks and other devices 
to at least double that rate, uh, which they can fire, further demonstrating the practical similarity between these two weapons. Nothing the plaintiffs have presented cast this into doubt. So she's saying that the plaintiffs, which is the Second Amendment Foundation, the FPC, she said nothing that the plaintiffs has said has cast this into doubt. Additionally, Beavis appeared uh, more concerned with whether the firing rates uh, difference between these two were exacerbated by things like uh, factoring criteria, reload time, uh, and the size of magazines and so forth, right? So she writes here in conclusion, for the foregoing reasons, the court grants the defendant's motion for a summary judgment, the defendants in this case being Cook County, and denies plaintiffs. It also denies defendants' motion to strike as moot. The clerk is directed to enter judgment in favor of the defendants. This ruling is final and appealable. Uh, and that's again entered by Judge Rebecca Palmer, United States District Court Judge. And that just happened today, March 1st. So what this tells us right here is that all of these judges that have heard these cases and upheld the bans in Illinois, these judges are activists who care more about their agenda than the actual rule of law. And they will find any way, any way around it, any loophole, it, they will try and connect whatever dots necessary to try and side for the state. Uh, in this instance, it was Cook County. So again, what we have here are judges that don't care about the Constitution. So again, if they can simply say that they're not protected by the Constitution and therefore the ban is upheld, what else can they say? Because right now you have things like the M9, you have the 320, the, the M17, right? That, that are in civilian use as well. Could they say that those are too close to what's used in the similar, in the military, excuse me? I mean, that basically goes for just about any handgun, right? They're all used in the military, or at least enough of them are used in the military where any type of handgun would actually be considered military style. So they, could they do it for that? We can't ignore that question at all because once they get through this phase and they've gone after one thing, what's to stop them from going after another and saying that it's too similar to what they use in the military? This is the slippery slope that we're on right now. And this is why the Supreme Court really needs to weigh in and clarify this because while Bruin was a very important case, it dealt with carry, it dealt with how the courts were supposed to look at Second Amendment cases, but if they can avoid the Second Amendment altogether, then you know we're in really big trouble. So again, I think the Supreme Court has got to weigh in on this. We know that Beavis is currently uh, awaiting cert at the Supreme Court. We'll see if the Supreme Court decides to take it up. If they do, hopefully that falls in our favor because as it stands right now, we have kind of rogue courts that are deciding that, well, these things aren't protected by the Constitution, and that is never a good thing. So I wanted to share that with you guys. It's breaking news as of today. Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.